my agent usually sends me a script. I read it, and if I'm interested, then um, they arrange a meeting with the director. Then if I like the director, and if the director likes me, we take it further, we discuss it, we um, discuss the script, any notes I might have, any suggestions for rewrites or deletions. Um, and then if I'm offered the job, I usually go to the read-through. That's where all the actors get together and all the uh, heads of department and we read the script and uh, again if there are any comments I give them to the director and I usually start um, the editing on the first day of principal photography we set up the editing rooms and uh, then I get rushes the following day. A typical day in the cutting room for me would be to um, watch rushes first thing in the morning at around 9.30. My assistant usually starts at 6.30 so that her name is Charlotte, she can have rushes for me right away. Um, I watch rushes, then I start assembling each scene. And um, I normally have to send the assembled scenes to the director the same day. So my assemblies are very tightly cut. They've got soundtrack, they've got sound design. If there are any green screens, I re usually compose them first so that my assistant can finesse them. I uh, layer all the, the compositions I want, all the bits and pieces. If it's a visual effect, I add all the elements. So I could have up to 10 elements sometimes. And because it's so time consuming, my assistant Charlotte does them. And um, then we send it off at the end of the day for the director. Once I've watched the rushes, I usually either call or text the director to make them know that everything's okay or if I have issues, if I want pickup shots or if they're missing some of the subtext, we discuss it. I like a very close relationship with a director because um, I consider editing the director's department. They have to trust me. We have to be in sync. It doesn't mean we have to agree on everything, but we have to have a fundamental understanding of what we're trying to achieve and it's my responsibility to make their vision come across in the edit. Well, I like to work with directors who can take a script and elevate it. And in the case of Stephen Daldry, he creates magic. Um, he goes beyond the script. He, um, he will insert moments and details that no other directors will think of. So for me, that's really thrilling to get rushes and be overwhelmed emotionally by them or laugh out loud because they're so funny and um, just um, directors who have good taste and strong instincts um, are great for me. I originally wanted to be a fashion photographer. I loved cameras, I loved images and interesting compositions. I went to film school and I studied still photography and motion pictures. And um, although I operated a lot, of, a lot of films, I kind of fell into editing. There was one exercise in particular that really um, resonated with me. The whole class shot one scene together and then we were given the same rushes. And most of my friends cut you know, wide shot to medium shot to close up. And I chose to show an image and pre-lap dialogue and start in close ups and then reveal the whole wide shot. So it was, it was unconventional. And um, although I got top marks and praise from my peers, for me, it was um, a turning point. Um, so then when I finished school, I ended up um, as a clapper loader on a few productions. And um, on the, the f movie I was a clapper loader on, I just followed the film through into the cutting room and I've been there ever since. Although The Crown is um, considered television for, for Netflix, it's, every episode is treated like a feature film. So for me, I have the collaboration with the director, Stephen Daldry, who is amazing. And since he comes from film, he insists on keeping me on to the end of the mix. So as an editor, I'm able to follow the film through to the very end. Well, I edited um, episodes eight and nine. Eight deals with the, um, with the Kennedys coming to Buckingham Palace. 
And episode nine is about the Gordonston episode with Prince Philip and the Prince Charles and their experiences there. Now, both episodes were completely different in tone. So I had the pleasure of, of editing a comedy and then a very serious, heartbreaking drama. So for me, I had the best of both worlds. In episode nine, although it was brilliantly written, um, I did restructure a lot of it because um, there were times when we cut away from one boy too early and emotionally we wanted to stay with that one boy, whether it was Charles or Philip. Um, I also had to find interesting transitions and um, so visually it was, it was a challenge to, to discover where we should switch over, what shots would complement each other. For example, after Prince Philip bullies the Queen and insists that Charles stay at Gordonston, we added um, one shot of Philip going into the hallway and uh, looking out the window and then there's just a flicker of remorse and he looks down. And uh, script-wise, I was meant to cut to young Philip on the obstacle course, but I chose to move up a shot of Charles, young Charles, looking in the trophy cabinet at young Philip. And so this juxtaposition of older Philip cutting to young Charles looking at his father as a young boy in the trophy cabinet with the trophy was uh, emotionally very connecting of all three characters in the show. So I tried to apply that throughout the whole show. Well, we all dream of getting great performances and um, I was really blessed on The Crown because from the, the big leads to the tiny parts gave brilliant performances. And I have to credit Stephen Daldry for that because um, in watching every take of his rushes, an actor might do something a few times and then Stephen will go and whisper in their ear and then the next take is magically 10 times better because they'll do something, it, could, it might be subtle, but they do something that transforms that scene. Um, so I edited the first season of The Crown as well. And um, I was very excited to learn that Hans Zimmer was scoring the film. So um, I got all his soundtracks from all the films he had scored. And we ju I just, and I think the other editors too, tried to use his sound and music on, as a temp track. Um, on the second season of The Crown, we were even luckier because we had the first season to draw from musically. The score had the right tone for the show, had um, some lovely melodies. So I was able to apply those to, to my shows as temp tracks. But um, Stephen Daldry and I were lucky because we went to Rupert Gregson Williams' home outside of London. Um, he has a beautiful home with rose gardens and it was very peaceful. And um, we spent a day with him working on episode nine. And he just played some melodies that we knew would work for the show. So it was a close relationship because Rupert would also come to our cutting room and um, he would bring some tracks and we would try them and um, it was a very collaborative relationship. Well, I think there's a misconception that The Crown has tons of money and we get tons of time and everything, but the reality is I was editing two shows at the same time and so I was working 14, 16 hours a day and um, usually six days a week. I had the luxury of having amazing material starting from a great script and material that Stephen Daldry had shot. So that was a blessing. But when you work on smaller budgets with um, less experienced directors, um, I would say it sometimes is harder because you have little material to play with. And um, if a director is less experienced, they sometimes give you less freedom to explore which is detrimental to the film because it's very healthy to have an unbiased editor's opinion and input into the film. So I would say hire the best people for the job and let them do their, their best and explore. Besides being um, a storyteller, an editor has to be um, very sensitive to the director because 
although they're very talented, um, they too can be vulnerable. So if I have anything to say, I say it one-on-one -on -one and not in front of the writer or director. I try to help them out as much as possible. So after I've watched Rushes, I'll either text, email, or call the director and suggest pickup shots or pick up scenes if I think we're missing a, a hum, um, an emotional beat. I think of the whole character arc, um, which is why I watch every take, because there could be a little gem in an unselected take. I put a soundtrack, I put temp uh, music on the, on the assemblies, so, and I also have the assistant create the visual effects after I've put my uh, comps in there. So that I try to deliver the most um, finished and polished assembly possible so that the director can really judge how it's shaping up.